Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at Colonial Church. My name is Jeff Lindsay. We're so glad that you've chosen to be with us this morning or throughout the week. We want to pause now and get our hearts kind of focused on worshiping God. We have added a new prayer that begins our worship. It comes from the Congregational Book of Worship. I invite you to pause and then pray it with me as we focus our attention, as we focus our praise on a God who loves us and is worthy of our praise. Let us pause. God of all grace, pour forth your Holy Spirit in this, our time of worship, and also in our daily lives, that we may have strength of which the world knows not, that we may be led in all truth, and that in the midst of our earthly trials and uncertainties, we may have the peace that passes understanding through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. i 
Good morning, I'm Mark Patrick. I'm one of the pastors here at Colonial. We have a few things that we'd love for you to know about and participate in. One of them is a class that's right after this service. It's called Rebels, Radicals, and Ranters. And it's the unexpected story of congregationalism. This is led by Christian Collins Wynn. The information is right on your screen, or you can go to our website to find out more details. This is the first week of fall, and one of the activities that we want you to know about is on October 10th, that's a Saturday. The details are on your screen. It's called Pandemic Pumpkin Extravaganza. It's gonna be a fun activity. It's for everyone, families, individuals, uh, whatever age, come and join us. We'd love to have you there. And then finally, we have what we call, are calling Sunday Circles. You can join us this Sunday morning on the North Lawn right after our service. It's a place to connect. You stay socially distanced, of course, wear your mask, of course, but you can drive by to say hello, you can grab a treat, or you can get set up in a socially distanced circle in the parking lot and have a chance to interact with some of your friends there. So we hope you'll join us at the Sunday Circles. Well, let's pray together, shall we? Our Lord, we lift our voices this day to you. We praise you together for all the ways you have shown up for your people, for us through the years. You have created memories for us of your faithfulness and kindness to us. We look to you for strength to stay in the struggle for what's important. You are the power that enables us to accomplish what you call us to. And as the years go by, we see you more and more as the source of our survival and our success. Many of us can reflect on our personal histories. We think of ways you provided for our grandparents and our parents, and now you use their stories to fuel our faith and resolve. May we become the best of their characteristics that led to their success and humbly learn from their human failures. Ultimately, Lord, we see that it's you who gives success. We know who you are. We know you are the one who fights for us. And we ask you to put that fight within us, that we not lose sight of the vision you've given to us. We together are your people. You lead us by your love, showing us by your example, directing us by your command. You give us your strength placing your strength within us and motivating us by your spirit. Beyond the forces all around us, we ask that you would build us up to overcome those who would tear us down. Bring us together in spite of those who would drive a polarizing wedge between us. Give us your hope as we face forces that dishearten us and give us courage even as some try to shake our confidence. You've led us to this place in life, this holy ground that you've established, and now you bring us along a path leading to your vision for us. You are the power. You will enable us to survive and thrive. May we follow you and trust you as we become the community of faith that you call us to be. Amen. And now we pray for individuals in our community who are facing illness or death or challenges. And so prayers of healing for Polly Patrick, Patty Bruflot, Ali Zomer, Bruce Moody, Betty Dresser, Christy Leiden. And prayers of comfort for the family of Mary Ann McLennan and the family of Don and Mary Lou Classy. And we pray for our mission partners, the Pilgrim Center for Reconciliation, and their ministry to bring reconciliation among all people so that they can be peace builders and witnesses for the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And now I invite you to pray together with me the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into trial, 
but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we invite you now to pass the peace of Christ either to those who are right next to you if you're watching together, or give someone a call, a text, an email. Uh, Reach out and let them know that you're thinking of them during this time of worship. Have a great day. Hey, kids. It's the part of the service where we just want to have a few words with you. We just want to talk with you and kind of get you in on what's happening with the scripture for today and give you a chance to think about some stuff. We're really glad that you're watching today. We're really glad that you're a part of our church, a very important part of our church. So as much as we can help you understand kind of where the scripture is leading us today and each Sunday, we're excited to do that. That's why we do these children's sermons. So, my friends, have you ever thought about promises? Have you ever thought about promises that people have made to you and promises that you've made to others, maybe a friend of yours or or to your mom or dad or to a brother or sister? I remember when I was maybe your age, my mom and dad promised that next Saturday we were going to go to the amusement park. Okay, the amusement park. Not Valley Fair, but it was like a Valley Fair, but... It's like your parents saying, hey, next Saturday, we're going to Valley Fair. You ever been there? It's like, it's going to be the best day of your life. Go to the amusement park. Well, my mom and dad had made that promise that we were going to go to Valley Fair. They promised. So we counted on it. We looked forward to it. And then when Saturday came, something had come up. I don't even remember what, but we didn't get to go. They they broke their promise. We were all sad. We were all heartbroken. We were all mad. (laughs) Because that's what happens when someone breaks a promise. It hurts. It's like they didn't care enough to follow through. Have you ever broken a promise? I know I have. I know I've promised things to my kids. I know I've promised things to my friends. I know I've made promises to God. And I've broke those promises. And I know that that hurts others too just like it hurts God at times. Well, you know what? One thing we can count on is that God never breaks promises. Matter of fact, the Bible says that if God breaks a promise, that God will stop existing. That's that's a pretty profound promise. So when God promises, we can count on it. Our scripture today is in the 15th chapter of Exodus. Exodus is a really important book in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, the number two book in the Bible. It's the story of Israel. It's the story of our forefathers and foremothers. It's the story. It's our history. It's how God was at work in the world, caring for God's people, and God promised Israel would be his people, that he would watch over them, that he would guide them, that he would lead them to a promised land and a land of future. And you know what? God still is fulfilling that promise. You know how I know that? Because we're still experiencing it. We're still seeing the work of God in our lives. God listens to our prayers. He speaks to us through Scripture. He guides us through our friends and our family. And so, my friends, when you are feeling lonely, when you're feeling left out, when you're feeling unsure, when you worry, God promises to be with you. And God will never promise, make a promise that he will break. God is with you. God loves you. God will never abandon you. And he will be with you no matter where you find yourself, no matter what you're experiencing. Why? Because he loves you. Just like this church loves you, just like your moms and dads and sisters and brothers love you, God loves you, and that will never change. Yay! Let's pray. God, thank you for never breaking promises, and especially that promise that you will always be with us, that you'll never leave us alone, and that you'll answer our prayers, and you'll guide us and lead us. So God, thanks for these wonderful kids of Colonial Church. And as I pray a blessing upon them, I 
I want to remind them that you are blessing them too. Every step of the way, every single day, for the rest of their lives, you will never break a promise. You will always love them and be with them. We give you thanks. We praise your name. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Exodus 15, verses 1 through 21. Then the Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. And your steadfast love, you led the people whom you had redeemed. You guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples heard. They trembled. Pangs seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. Trembling seized the leaders of Moab. And the inhabitants of Canaan melted away. Terror and dread fell upon them. By the might of your arm they became still as stone. Until your people, O Lord, passed by. Until the people whom you acquired passed by. You brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your own possession, the place, O Lord, that you made your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When the horses of Pharaoh and his chariots and his chariots drivers went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. So ends our scripture reading for today. Thanks be to God. The doctor and the nurse had responded to the plea of a desperate farmer. The farmer's wife was desperately ill. The doctor with the familiar black bag in hand and the nurse were ushered upstairs to where the farmer's wife was. The farmer and the rest of the family waited anxiously downstairs. After a few minutes, the doctor came down with a worried look and asked for a screwdriver. After another few minutes, the nurse came down and asked, for a can opener. Soon after that, the doctor reappeared, tense and visibly shook, and asked for a hammer and a chisel. By this time, the doctor contained, could contain himself no longer and said, what in the world is wrong with my wife? Don't know yet, said the doctor. I can't get my black bag open yet. I sometimes wonder. If this is why Scripture, especially the Old Testament, is less than helpful to so many people of faith. It's hard for us to get into that bag, isn't it? This bag of the people of God's history. This bag which includes helpful insights and tools for our lives. 
and doing it with keys that don't always work. Well, one key that could get us in is to imagine ourselves in the story. Because we really shouldn't read Scripture as spectators, but rather as participants. If the tools inside this bag are to help us, they're going to help us because God is using them to encourage our spiritual health. The word exodus literally means the way out or exit. Exodus, our book for today, records Israel's journey from Egypt to Canaan, the promised land of God. If we put ourselves in the story, it could represent our own spiritual journey from the bondage of sin to the new land of freedom and forgiveness that we receive in the grace of Jesus. That's why the Apostle Paul encourages us when he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 11, these things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. Maybe that's why Exodus could be the most important book of the Bible because it gives Israel, the people of God, their identity. It is in this book that we hear of God's deliverance and anointing of Moses who would lead the Hebrews from captivity. It's here we learn of God's unrelenting power. We see it in the ten plagues, in the first Passover that convinces Pharaoh to let God's people be free. In the book of Exodus is the origin of the Ten Commandments and the beginning of the tabernacle, that place where God dwells with God's people. It is in Exodus that Joshua assumes command to take Israel into the promised land and where Israel defeats many nations to assume its place. So much of Israel's rich history is here in Exodus. So much we can learn from. So much that can help us on our journey of faith. So what can we learn from our passage of today, from this book of Exodus, that can help us better understand how to be God's people, to be the church, as we continue our theme for this fall? Well, the first 19 verses of our reading for today comprises the Song of Moses with the final two verses being the song of Miriam. The Hebrews, the Israelites, had escaped Egypt and are now free. They had been set free from Pharaoh, and God delivered them across the Red Sea and eliminated Pharaoh's army. Now, safely on the other side, they celebrate in song. Well, many scholars believe that the song of Moses has grown throughout the years as God's people reflect again and again on the mighty acts of God and, in retrospect, praise God. But Miriam's song captured the essence of praise, didn't it? Her song is a brief, spontaneous outbreak of rejoicing. You can almost see it in your mind's eye. Miriam takes her timbrel in her hand and she beats it as she begins to dance in pure awe and celebration of God's deliverance and faithfulness. The people are free. They are free indeed. Moses' hymn became part of the worship of Israel, probably used in the Passover celebration. This was because of how this song is laid out. It's these three movements that happen that point us towards God. The first movement was the celebration of God's mighty deeds. From beginning to end, it is praise of God. And because thanksgiving really is a relatively new concept, this song suggests less that they were thankful to God and more likely expressing a willingness to respond with faithfulness for what God had done for them. Would they live as a people who have been set free a question for them, a question for us. Do we? The second movement of the song is the claiming of God's strength. Leaning on God's mercy and grace is where the true freedom comes. 
trusting that God's strength can sustain, can carry the people of God even through the valley of the shadow of death. In a world that loves to pull itself up by its own bootstraps until it can't, until our best efforts aren't enough, and then we ask, where will we turn? This song points us towards claiming God's strength and God's strength alone. Celebration of God's work is throughout the song. Claiming God's strength is a response to these deeds of God. And together they create that third movement of the confidence they can have in God. Confidence in God's ongoing care and faithfulness. A confidence that comes from deliverance from slavery and a hope for a future. A future with a land of milk and honey. A confidence built really on so many lapses of confidence. Sound familiar? Never in their lives had they been free. They had thought about freedom. They had talked about freedom, even dreamt about freedom. Now with the wave of Moses' staff, they're free. God had delivered them from bondage, delivered them from slavery, just as God had promised God had given them a new start, and their freedom became a reality. As this reality sunk in, just like their toes on the shore of that far side of the Red Sea, all of Israel began to sing. And they began to sing this new song, Moses' song. This is the first song recorded in the Bible. I have no doubt many songs have been sung before, but this one, special. We don't know the tune that goes with the words, but the words ring truth and the words praise God. Praise God for being the deliverer, the savior, the redeemer who offered them true freedom. My friends, as the church, we are a covenant community of freedom because we have a redeemer that has worked for us through our history as well. A powerful, transformative redemption we can know personally, can offer to each other, and could change the world through us. Redeemer was the primary term by which the Jews understood the promised Messiah's work. Redeemed. The nation of Israel loved to proclaim it, and the Jewish people still do today. And the redemption they love to reclaim is the deliverance that came from the bondage in Egypt. This is the big event that they built their shaky faith upon. Listen to a couple of recollections, both from Psalm 77 and Psalm 106. You are the God who works wonders, the psalmist declares. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprint was unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Then he rebuked the Red Sea, and it became dry, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. So he saved them from the hand of the foe and redeemed them from the power of the enemy. And the waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them was left. This was God's work, faithfully fulfilling God's promise to God's people. Will the people trust God? Will the church trust that same God? Will we trust that same God today? 
This is how God described God's own work of deliverance in Exodus 6.6. 6. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. <clears throat> so what do we do? So what do we do, my friends, with God's promises? What should the church's reaction be to God's promises? It does challenge us to determine for ourselves whether we believe God is faithful or not. For our answer determines a great deal, doesn't it? To be redeemed by God is to be delivered from bondage. It is to be set free from the powers of this world by the power of God. The Hebrew term for redeem, galal, is a specialized word. It does not merely mean to deliver or to be rescued. More closely connected to the word is the concept of ransom, like paying a ransom to reclaim a person or an object. Someone becomes impoverished. They then must become a bondservant in order to pay their debts. But if someone pays their debt, they're released. They are truly free. Can you see how this fits with the redemption of Israel? At that time, known simply as the Hebrews, they had been reduced to slavery in Egypt. They were in bondage. They needed a redeemer to rescue them. They needed a redeemer to claim them. They could not appeal to neighboring kings for help. No one claimed them. No one was going to pay for them or fight for them. No one but the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. God had made a promise, a covenant with these three fathers of the Hebrews to deliver their descendants and had not nor has not forgotten the promise. This is why the church still sees themselves as people of the covenant. Why the church still trusts the promises God made to them, to us, and the covenant that guides our relationships with each other. What can we glean from the exodus of Israel from Egypt? This, this exodus from Egypt for Israel is a foreshadow, really, of the redemptive work of Jesus. Those who profess Jesus experience the ongoing redemptive work of God. The church is like Israel, redeemed by God, but in Jesus for the bondage of our sinful nature. We are the exiles who were separate from God because of our sin and now brought back to God through the redemption of Jesus. Any songs welling up in your spirit from this good news, my friends? Well, maybe not. Well, maybe not because we often live as though we are still in bondage and still living in exile. What do I mean? When the Hebrews were redeemed from bondage and captivity in Egypt, before they, re, before they barely begun their journey, after the crossing through the sea, they acted as though they would be better to return to their captivity. Did you get that? They had just experienced this powerful work of God. They had barely set off on their journey after seeing Pharaoh defeated. And they're already griping. They're already losing faith. Just ten verses later than our story today. They would say, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meal pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Four more times they would make the same complaint even one time ready to elect a leader to take them back to Egypt. What they discovered was what we also know to be true. That following God is not easy. Trusting God is not easy, even as God shows God's mighty acts to us. They got hungry. They got thirsty. They got lost. They had doubts. Sound familiar? 
Maybe we feel like we are still exiles in Babylon. Maybe we're asking ourselves, is God for us? Does God really care? Has God really forgiven us? Are we truly free? Let us remember that we are the redeemed. Jesus Christ has fought for us, has paid for our redemption, and there's nothing more than we can add to it but our desire to live faithfully. It's what it means to be the church, to truly live in God's redemption and offer to the world around us that same good news in so many ways. What did the scripture say? God has redeemed us with an outstretched arm. And we praise God not by adding our might, but by recognizing our helplessness and living in God's might, in God's grace. But let us remember what we, be, what we have been redeemed for. We are a free people who live with the keys to a bag full of history of God's faithfulness that will, if we let it, inform us, encourage us, and direct us. Church, church, are you ready to take a deep breath and sing with me? Celebrating the mighty deeds of God's presence in our lives, those places we are seeing God work miraculously for our good, are you ready to join in the chorus which claims God's strength to face the challenges of the world around us? Because leaning on God's mercy and grace is where true freedom from life's challenges comes. Declare with me, won't you, your trust in God's strength, which will sustain God's people, you and I, even now. Will you add your voice to the covenant community choir that declares a shared confidence in God, a confidence in God's ongoing love, care, and faithfulness, a confidence that will come from a faith in the Redeemer who will deliver us from despair and worry and fear if we would truly, if we would just truly believe. To be the church is to believe in a future and a hope that celebrates God's deeds, leads on, leans on God's strength, and holds fast to their confidence in God's declared faithfulness. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath, come now with praises before him let the amen sound from his people again gladly forever adore him amen times I've tried to tell you, many times I've cried alone, always I'm surprised how well you cut my feelings to the bone, don't want to leave you really, I've invested too much time to give you up that easy to the doubts that complicate your mind. i
Well, as we come to this time of generosity, I just thought I might pause for a second. First, to thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the ways that you have given to the life of this church through your time, your talents, and of course your resources. It's your gifts, it's your faithfulness, your generosity that makes the work that we do here in this church possible. So thank you. I also want to be mindful of the fact that many of you might be struggling. There might be a way for this church to help you, to support you. So please, if you are in need, reach out to us. If it's just to have a conversation with one of the pastors, or if it's an actual need that we might be able to respond to, please let us be generous in the spirit of generosity that this church has manifested in so many ways. Let us be generous to you as well. And secondly, we'd love to invite you to participate in what we're calling the mission of the month. It just started this month, this fall. Our first mission of the month is Beyond Limits. Beyond Limits is a Christian college experience for students with developmental disabilities. It's out at Bethany College, out in Bloomington. And we've had already several classes of students that have graduated, that are living fulfilled lives because of this great work. We have had opportunities to get to know them throughout this month and ways for you to get to know their campus. And we'd like to just pause now and give you a chance to meet one of their students. And so please take a look at this. Meet Carrie. She never thought college would be possible for her. I'm excited to be attending a residential college. Living independently and making my own decisions. Carrie is a young woman with a cognitive disability that would have made going to college impossible. Today, however, she's integrated into college life, <laughs> learning real life skills, sharing real life experiences. At college, I'm learning the skills I need to live on my own. I'm making lifelong friends and getting on the job training. People with disabilities should be given that opportunity. Thanks to Beyond Limits, my future has no limits. There are no strings on me. Beyond Limits is a faith-based college experience program. If you agree that people with disabilities should be given the opportunity to go to college, donate now at beyondlimitscollege.com. If you'd like to participate in this mission of the month, well, you know how to do it. You can either give online, you can send us a check within the memo section that says Beyond Limits, or you can just drop off your resources. We're so glad that you would pray for this ministry, that you would support this ministry, but more important, just know about these wonderful ministry partners that we have. So let's now pray. Pray a blessing on your generosity and pray, pray a blessing upon Beyond Limits our mission, ministry of the month. Let us pray. God, we do thank you that you give us what we need to be generous to the work you call us to. Thank you for the folks of Colonial who give so amazingly that helps us to continue to do this work that hopefully is a blessing to you. Thank you for our mission partners, so many of them around the world, but especially today, thank you for Beyond Limits. Thank you for the way that you have cared for those with developmental disabilities. Use our resources, use our prayers, use our support to carry on that good work. And bless each one in their giving. Blessed to be a blessing. We pray this in your name. Amen. I know what it means to be there All alone in the dark With your thoughts and your fears And your prayers But now is for sure the wrong time To be on your own I'll be the one to your core I'll be the new to your old And even in a war zone I'll be your home And even if the sky begins to fall
it twists and it turns and it burns but it heals what it steals it returns join the rebellion it's time to save the world oh i can imagine a future where there is no hate forget what they say you have always been great i see you on the battle line i got your back and i know you got mine I hope you're glad you've come to worship today. I hope you have sensed God's presence, sensed God's spirit working in your heart and in your mind and your life. I hope you're feeling a new sense of God's presence and a new confidence that will lead you into the week to come. Of course, we want you to be involved in the life of this church. I continue to point you to our website, which has all the information. But just a reminder for today, our virtual connection corner the way to get on there is right here on your screen. They can answer some of your questions or concerns or hear from you. But if you get in your car right now, you could drive over to the church and be a part of the Sunday circles. You could be here live, connecting with other members of this church, maybe picking up a treat, just saying hi to some of the staff. And don't forget, Christian's class. We really want to invite you to Explore what congregational historically is and what it can mean for us as a church going forward. We be in a congregational church. And so, we begin our week together. And as we go, I want to remind you to look for and remember the mighty acts of God. See God's power in your life. Because then it's going to encourage you to hold fast to that strength that can sustain you through all of what life brings our way. And that will inspire you with a new confidence. A new confidence in your faith. A new confidence in your church. A new confidence in your walk. Because God will be with you. We'll be together. Serving the world. The best we can. For God's honor. For God's praise. So go forth. Trusting God is going to lead you this week. Go with his blessing. Now and forever. Amen. Bless you. Bye for now.